Welcome to episode eight of The Whole Shot. Um, in this episode, I've got Dusty with me again and Andy. We're going to talk a little bit about the race we just finished up already over a week ago, the River Monster GPS, which was great. Raw. False. It no, it was, it was fun. It was good. Probably, I don't know. So, so let's start out. Let's talk about the GPSs. So this race was a GPS format. Um, the only one of the season like that. What, so what what did you guys think? How did it work? How did it not work? Uh, let's see. So I guess first I'll talk about what I chose to run as a GPS. So I had an old Garmin Colorado 400T that my brother had given me. I'd never used. Um, so I had it on that. And then I had my actual phone, which I don't know I'd recommend anybody using their real phone. But hey, I did and I didn't break it. So that's a solid. Um, but the phone was actually way better, easier to see, easier to manipulate than the actual GPS. Um, but I did have to run a power cord, so I didn't run out of battery. Um, and the mount that I chose for the phone was not great. It was this uh, kind of just rubber thing. It, it kind of pulled it tight around your bars and it held all four corners of the, of the phone. And that thing kept rotating on me. I kept having, continually having to put it back in position. Um, so, but. So that part of it, you know, wasn't the greatest. What did you guys run for GPS? So I had two, I bought two Etrex 32X uh, GPSs. And then Dusty and I both have uh, the Mako 360 bars that have the mount on top of it for the two ride, whatever cases. I didn't buy the two ride cases. I just bought some gizmo cases and made my own mounts for those. And the mounting was pretty solid. Um, I did end up bending one of the cases up a little bit, but the GPSs never fell out. They never rotate anything like that. So the, that worked out pretty well. Um, I kind of found I had two because that's what other guys were running, I guess. And I, I found that I, I probably didn't really need to. I ran them one at 120 feet, I think. I don't remember what the other one was, but I really used that 120 feet one about the whole time. Um, they And the E-Trex is, the screen is so small. Like I found it really difficult to see the screens. I, you know, if I, if I tried to look down and focus on it while I was riding, I just couldn't. I couldn't focus on it. I'd veer off the course. So I ended up stopping a lot to look at it. Um, but really only in tricky spots. I mean, it worked okay. You know, once I kind of got into the groove, you know, three or four hours into the race. But... <laughs> yeah, in the groove. So navigation was interesting. I'd, I'd never done anything like this before. And what I found really quick was that I was zoomed in way too much. Uh, I, don't, I don't know where I left it, but I found that when you're zoomed out, two things. One, you can see more of the trail. So you kind of knew, oh, the trail went left, I should be going left. And the other thing is, they're really not that accurate. You know, when you're zoomed in, it looks like you're a mile off the trail. You know, you might be 30 feet off of their GPS trace, but um, so zooming out was definitely key. Yeah, I agree. So sometimes it's like, it looked like you were right on the trail. Other times, according to the GPS, you'd be 25, 50 feet off, even though you knew you were on what should yeah. have been the course, so. I don't know if that was just the tree, the tree cover messing with the GPS signal or what, but yeah, it was off pretty frequently. So yeah, right after, so right from the start, um, there was just this kind of, this one loop before we doubled back to where the start was. And in that section, man, it looked like someone stepped on a spider and all the babies scattered. I mean, there was people going everywhere. And I know I was way off and trying to figure it out made several mistakes just in that first little loop till I figured out what the heck I was doing. It was bad. It started off really poorly, really fast for me because, you know, when you, when we started, it was that single trail off camber and you kind of went all the way down mm -hmm. to the bottom of this, uh, where you almost, you were supposed to almost go to the bottom of this hillside and then you cut right. Well, yeah. I cut left cause I saw a bunch of bikes down in that, that ravine down there. So I cut left, went down in there. All these guys are trying to go up this rocky ravine like impossible, like worse than anything that was actually in the course. And I'm like, holy shit. So this is how it's going to be for this whole race. <laughs> um, but then finally figured out that that was completely wrong and had to go back up the hill and then got back on the path. But yeah, yeah so, so Dusty, you started after me one or two spots or something. So, you know, 60 seconds or something, maybe. Yeah. Then I was so lost in that first section that I caught up to you and, I'm, and you were already in front of me because we were so messed up. Yeah, there was like five or six of us. We all went the wrong way. Like there was tape. 
and you were supposed to dive down the hill right before a section of tape, but there was tape there. So you're just like, oh, it keeps going straight. And you thought it went straight and then ducked back down, but instead it turned left and around the hill. And me and another guy went that way. And there was another guy up above the hill above us. Like I, there was four or five people. And finally, I, I, we realized that you had to duck down this little, almost like game trail. It was a really tight little small section of single trail. And you could barely see it. But yeah, there was a bunch of us back in there. That we were all just jumbled up trying to figure it out. So random start. And, you know, we drew... I don't know, number 84 or 85, somewhere in there. Uh, I was and I would say starting at the back, it, it's not it, it's not good for bottlenecks, but it is good because the trail's more burnt in by the time you get there. Yeah, I was 50. I think I was exactly 50 or right around there. But yeah, there were guys everywhere. I mean, everywhere along the course, people off the course, going your direction, going against the your direction. Oh, yeah. I mean, You're just everywhere. On. Yeah. Yeah, so it was a little chaotic in spots. Um, yeah, some places it was confusing because there, there's a lot of trails out at this place. This, what was it called? Cairo Kairos. 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 It's an OHV park. So there's a lot of uh, pre existing trails out there. And so you couldn't tell sometimes that you're on the course. It's like, should I be going up this really rough, rocky creek bed or should I be on the Jeep road right next to it or on the trail right next to that? So it was. I think there was a lot of flexibility there about where you were riding or where you should be riding. So yeah, that was interesting. Um, I'd do it again. It was kind of like the night riding thing. Like I think you got to go out and do it once and kind of get your feet wet and figure out how the thing works. And then I think the second, third times, I think it would be a little bit easier and, and funner. Yeah, it would have been easier to actually pre-run something following a track and dialing stuff in instead of yeah. i was literally i was still working fixing my gps as gary was like oh you're go you're late yeah. Yeah. and i'm like I, I don't care whatever i'm just i literally i was like 10 or 15 seconds off the line because i was still trying to mess with my gps so yeah well that's yeah, what we were saying right we were going to be the guy that you know when he says go just rip off into the woods yeah. like turn because <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know it matters for an eight hour race yeah yeah there was, yeah, there was some tricky stuff about the GPSs. And so like, I only used it twice before the race. One time I used it out at Saddleback just to kind of see how it, you know, what the train looked like and how it looked and stuff. I wasn't trying to follow a, a route or anything. And then I did use it to follow a route, um, but on my bicycle kind of around the neighborhood and stuff where I live. So at least I figured out a couple things. Like, I think one thing that caught you up was if you touch that little joystick on, um, the e-trex while you're riding it freezes the map and you got to know you got to hit the back button to go back to where it sh you know shows you following the route so little things like that you know little things little things no like, that's probably no pretty <laughs> <laughs> so this is the part uh where i kind of share some of the the map information i guess or the routes that we took so andy created this cool mm -hmm. overlay of of the route and put his track on there and my track on there we don't have Dusty's because he's afraid to share it with us. Um, but yeah, I mean, what what I saw was, oh, there we go. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So on this, uh, so I'm the orange and Kevin is the purple and the blue was the trace that they sent us. Mm -hmm. So just in this, this first loop, this section right here, you can see, I would, you know, here's the start. And immediately I'm going the wrong way, doubling back, doubling back here, trying to figure it out. You can see we both made a mistake here. And then finally, you know, we get finally got up to this ravine and we kind of got on track. But yeah, it was it was crazy during the during that first section. Yeah, you can see several spots where you go off. I mean, I don't know how far that is. Uh... Yeah, you can see right here the gold orange color. That's me. Right. So. It's like, I, I totally missed that. I went a, a decent ways there and realized, no, you know, I'm off, went back. And, you know, that was just a single track hill climb that I had missed there. Yeah. And so came back, hit it, you know. So what I kept doing was like, I think I'm on the course. I think I'm on the course. And then I get to the base of a hill. And so then I hit it and I'm riding up this thing. And when you're climbing a steep hill, you can't look at the GPS. And then you get to the top of it where you can finally look down at it. And you're like, ah, oh, crap, I'm so far off. I got to turn around and figure out where I got off the course. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can see over here, there's an area where you made a loop that was 
off. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Probably went up something had to come back down it, you know? Yeah. 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 How, I mean, how, what was it like for you, Dusty? Do you, was it pretty easy to follow? Uh, yeah. I mean, other than the obvious, <laughs> That creek run, that creek run I did at the end though, that was pretty fun. Yeah, so yeah. We, I didn't so have too many. I, I honestly didn't have any problems with the. I've got really great, really really great eyesight, like twenty, almost twenty ten vision. Sometimes some days twenty ten vision. So seeing the screen didn't bother me at all, and looking down at it didn't bother me at all. Um, but yeah, I didn't have any problems as far as the actual navigation part. The the error was in the operating part. Right. All yeah. right. So we, we gotta we gotta let's, let's get the elephant out of the room here. Let's 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 see the trace. Can I can I I have can you show it? share it? I sent him a screenshot of it. Oh, yeah, you guys keep I, talking. I, I ended I up to... I went all the way from the north side to the south side of the property following uh Copper Branch Creek or whatever that creek is and didn't realize it until I saw a sign that says you are entering uh U.S. Army Corps engineer property or something like that, and I was like, "Oh, this, this isn't right." That seems wrong. Yeah, and so I, I I I passed you guys, and they're like, "No, you need to go this way," and I was like, "Nah, my GPS says that way." <clears throat> so come to find out, I had hit both of the little joystick things here on my E-Trexes. Yeah, you guys know what that is if you have an E-Trex. And it had frozen my screen. So I, I'm sitting there looking down on this thing and thought I'm following this trail. It hadn't moved in a while. It should have clicked, but it was my cursor. They were both right on top of my track or the trace. So they're not moving, but I'm moving. And I'm like, all right, you know, there should be a right here or right sometime. I just kept going and going and going. I ended up like two and two, two and a half miles off course. Yeah. I oh. caught up with a guy. Right when I was in going through this kind of rocky ravine, I caught up with this guy sitting there and he was screwing with the GPS and he's like, Hey man, how do I get this to follow the, the stupid bike? It keeps falling off the thing. And that's exactly what you did. I'm like, you got to go up here. You got to hit the back button and then it'll put you back in the set, kind of the center of the screen there. But yeah, if you don't know that. Yeah. I didn't realize it until it was too late. And by the time I saw their sign, I was like, Oh man, this is wrong. Yeah, I knew something was up because so you go through that first 15 mile section or whatever and you get to the pit stop. And that's right. That's where I stopped. I was so exhausted. Maybe we'll get to that in a little while. But I, I left there. I went back to the truck. And then here I see Dusty riding up from the complete opposite direction. <laughs> I finished of the fuel stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was it was uh, the, the, the positive of the GPS was it got me out. Like once I figured out, I figured out how to get back to where I needed to go. Uh, cause there was a spot where it was, I, I, I rode around a bunch of down trees. Uh, I'm sure the Kairos guys, they know exactly what I'm talking about. And I, I rode over, it was off camera and it just dropped straight down. I got down that, but then when I went to go back around it, there was no grip, no traction. I was like, I can't get up this. So I had to like literally use my GPS and just kind of eyeball where I'm going by using the actual map to try and find my way back. So I was ripping up and down a bunch of gravel roads, trying to, Find, find spots and uh yeah and then my bike died right as i got back to where i should have been come to find out for some odd reason my bike was leaking some fuel hmm. or i was burning a bunch of fuel and i was pretty much out of gas yeah i don't know where you got off i mean right here somewhere in this mess of tracks yeah. <laughs> right yeah that's not not good <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so what did you guys think of the terrain as far as difficulty comparing it to other races, things like that? Other, I'll say other steer races. Let's go on that. Uh, I'd say it was probably the hardest one of the year, I, at least for me. I, I struggled. Your... I mean, the nightmare race was hard, um, you know, just trying to ride at night, and it was super rocky, but... Uh, I don't know. I just struggled. I struggled so badly with the hill climbs there. The hill climbs there were way taller, um, a lot steeper. Um, and for whatever reason, I just, I couldn't ride a hill. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I saw some other guys posting on Facebook saying maybe it was the hardest one too. And, and I agree. It was pretty hard. 
I, but I still think for me, I mean, it was the Cobra Crusher was the hardest and maybe that's because it was the first race and it was so slick, but I mean, nothing was not doable. I mean, you know, I only, like I said, I only did that first 50 mile section, but nothing was not, wasn't doable. There were some steep hills and things. Um, but for me, it was just the length of the thing and the amount of time and just kind of petering out after four or five hours. Yeah. Um, but I thought it was a, it was probably the funnest course for sure. In my opinion. I would say this was probably the most difficult. Now I did, I did Cobra Crusher. I, I missed bootlegger, did nightmare. Um, nightmare was strenuous, a lot of rocky climbs, but nothing that you couldn't get up. Nothing. You're like, Oh my gosh, I gotta have help. Right. But this race, um, there was one, one place in the ravine. I ended up, uh, kind of tagging up with uh philip phillips and you know we were we having me camp beside each other and we just happened to see each other during the race and so he and i helped each other get up that but it was just the uh a great big boulder in the middle and it was super super slick i mean you just could get yeah. no traction so we helped each other up that and you know i think if if you didn't have help there i mean we might still be out there it yeah, was really I, slippery i think i know what you're talking about because i had th there were people helping each other there when i got there too um, and in fact, I had someone help kind of pull me through and it was just slipperier than snot. I mean, it was really hard to get through there. Um, yeah, I agree. That was pretty rough. So that one, I think, was difficult. Um, there was two other spots that, that were I thought were pretty challenging, like the long hill climbs. Honestly, I thought were pretty cool, you know, because yeah. you just kind of wind it up and, and charge at them and you know, and, and I see a lot of people having trouble with them, but honestly, traction was really good that day. So even if I came to a stop, I was always able to, to keep yeah, going. Yeah. I never, I never had to go back down anything, you know. Yeah. Um, but there was a spot uh, fairly early in the race. Um, in fact, I can show you on the map where it is. So this little section right here, we got there and you can see, you know, all this trying to figure out what we're going to do. We, we rode there and we all said, we looked up and we saw this trail going up a really, really steep section right here. And we thought, no, no, there's no way. I mean, it's like practically vertical. There's no way they want us to go up that. And so we rode over here and we're like, nope, nope. GPS says we're supposed to go up this. So, so we hit it. Um, and I did make it on my own, but it was so steep. And there was like kind of a rock section right at the top that really kicked you funny. So, I mean, I kind of charged up it and the bike, the bike made it to the top. I wasn't on it at the time, but the bike made it up. Yeah. And so I was able to crawl back up there and pick the bike up and go from there. I didn't have to hit it again, but it was, that was pretty tricky. It was, yeah, it was it wasn't very steep. long, but man, it was a steep one. Yep. Yeah. I sat there for a long time. You can see where I went. I sat there for a long time and bikes were just crashing on there and, and a lot of people weren't making it up. And finally, you can see I, you know, a bunch of guys ended up not doing that. And I, oh yeah, I saw a lot of guys, their bike come tumbling down that, that was, it was kind of risky. Yeah. And then the other place that, that I did really poorly was way over here. In fact, it's right, right about the time my uh, watch stopped recording, but this big mess looks like we both had trouble here. This was dry, powdery, super off camber. Oh, and man. I got, I didn't have enough speed going through there and my bike ended up falling over and there would be four, there was four guys there and we, we towed each other across that dumb thing. That was really strenuous. That was uh, awful. That, and that's right in the spot where I died. I mean, like, I don't know how far that was in. It was what, three, four three, hours or something. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're most of the way, this was the, what we yeah. show here is 15 miles. I just, you're most of the way through it. So. Yeah. I ran out of energy in that spot. Like I, I, I slid down that off camber stuff and I had no energy. I don't know if it was heat exhaustion. I feel like maybe I had some heat exhaustion going. Cause I just, my, I had zero energy at that point. I couldn't push the bike. I couldn't ride the bike. I had some guys help me uh, get out of that section. And then I went up a little way in this backdrop I'm using for the video or for the, the podcast here. Like I just stopped. I laid down. I had a peanut butter sandwich in my backpack. I sat there and I drank some water and I ate this sandwich. And I rested there for probably 20 or 30 minutes just trying to get some energy back. And finally I did. But man, that is the spot where I just died. It was Yeah, that was really tricky. I mean, I did see a couple of guys make it through it on their own. 
but I saw a lot of guys drop the bike there and have to help each other. So yeah. that was definitely tricky. I, I need to get better at that, you know. Now, if it had been wet, this oh, would have been a different race. Yeah. Because those hill climbs, if they would have been slick and snotty, it would have been a lot more difficult. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, any other tricky spots? I think those were it for me. That slick ravine, the off-camber stuff. Um, there was that one crazy long uphill, which was actually pretty fun. I mean, it just went and went and went oh, yeah. and went. Um, but yeah, those were probably the two trickiest spots for me. All right, what else? How... So, you know, I didn't take this one super serious. I'm not chasing the points or anything. Yeah. And I, you talked about, did you take breaks? So I, I took a, quite a bit of breaks after I, um, you know, cause I didn't want to get to like in, in nightmare, I totally crapped out. I, 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 you know, my heart rate hit a couple hundred and I was just gone after that. I couldn't do anything. So I didn't want to do that again. Um, yeah. So I took enough breaks to keep my, keep my composure um, I think I still hit a fairly high heart rate at times, but it wasn't too bad. And, um, and then when I, after, oh, oh, we forgot about one tricky spot. The worst spot on the whole track what was that? Was the crazy downhill. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So, so this is later in the race and you just, you, there was a, you started a new single track section and then right there, there was a sign and the sign says, you know, bikes only steep or something like that. Like, okay, yeah, I got walk, it, you know. Walk, walk it or something. Well, like no, that. it didn't say that right at the start of it, see? So then you go on down this for a little ways. And then <clears throat> right before you, you're already off camber and you're going downhill and you have to turn 90 degrees left mm -hmm. and it gets ridiculously steep. And there was another sign right there. I totally whiffed that sign because I was so focused on, I'm going to get my body position right and I'm going to do this hill, you know. Well, that sign actually said, you know, danger, steep. And then underneath it, kind of small writing, it says, get off the bike. Yeah, maybe that's Yeah, I, I missed, I kind of missed that. So I take off down the hill. Everything's going great. Um, you know, modulate my brakes, everything the way I want, except, and, and I wasn't going super fast, but, you know, you're accelerating because it's quite steep. But then like the bottom, like 20, 30 feet of it was just thick mud. And there was yeah. no chance, man. And so I, I, I low sided down there and um, wasn't too bad. So then I yell at my buddy. I'm like, hey, you know, you can get off the bike and walk it. So he's cool. So he's safe. So while he's walking down, another guy comes and you, he must not have seen the sign either because this guy comes around the corner and he's like up on the front wheel, like going, oh, you're going. And so he lets off the front so he doesn't go endo. But then the whole bike and him kind of tumble down the oh, hill. Man. Uh, so that one was pretty bad and then before we got out of there um i didn't capture this guy on video but another guy we look back and he's coming like wide open like and all he's saying is f f f f f f f and bam man he he hit a, a big boulder i mean something hit loud hmm. and uh he actually thought he might have broke his leg but we oh, saw him later and he was all right so but yeah he was going way too fast so i'm sure anybody that didn't um, see the sign to get off the bike i bet a lot of people went down there yeah so i i guess i lucked out there because i i got there i saw the sign it said walk it down but i looked at the hill and it looked dry it didn't look that bad i'm like i'm gonna try it i made it about 10 feet and then it turned soft and the the front wheel just knifed the bike went down and and so I, then i'm i'm off the bike i kill it and then this guy is down at the bottom of that thing yelling up going, you have to walk it down. And I'm like, <laughs> I saw it. I just didn't believe it. <laughs> so then I picked the bike up and I walked it all the way down to the bottom there. But yeah, I forgot about that section. Yeah. I think if it hadn't been muddy, I would have rode it out. But man, when I hit the mud, that's all she wrote. Yeah, it was muddy at the bottom. Um, yeah. So let's see. Um, what else? Kind of, We normally do like a damage report how the bike spared um mine you know like i said before i kind of bent one of the gps cases up um, but nothing bad i've been ever since the first race where i really did all that damage i've been trying to be super careful about not hurting the bike and i think this time i don't i don't think i really hurt anything i did wash the bike and went over it i didn't see really too much damage did you guys I know. anything 
the only time that it it hit hard at all was on that stout, steep downhill. The front fender kind of bent in, but it didn't break or anything. So really just scratches is all the damage I took. I didn't even yeah. see any real big dings in the pipe or anything. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, no huge rocks like the rat last race where you're bouncing the pipe off of <coughs> trying to squeeze the bike through. So that was cool. And Dusty. Dusty. <laughs> huh? Damage report. Oh, I'm looking at part of it. Uh, what, all, what, what all did I break? Um, did I show it on camera? So I'll we'll call it a break, but my carbs all jacked up. Um, that's all getting torn apart. Uh, bent my uh, bent my front pipe some more. I don't even know how I did it. Um, I'm looking at my bike right now. Other than that, I think the other the only other thing I, I really broke was this bad boy right here. <laughs> Right where the bait on betas, they have a little clip in uh, for the release. And I was hitting that one hill climb that I couldn't, I just couldn't get up. And I, I looked down, I finally get it like decent up, decent ways up. And I'm like, all right, I can push right it from here. And I looked down and my seat's like 10 feet below me. And I was like, well, this is going to be fun. Uh, so I go to grab it thinking maybe it just came and done. No, I broke the tab. So. Uh, that was kind of the big bummer for me. I ended up zip tying it back on and it kept coming off. Uh, so yeah, seat was a big one for me. I already got a replacement though, so I'm good to go. Good to go. Nice. All right. So overall, um, I thought it was pretty fun. Um, now I stopped at the gas stop. So whatever that is, 15 miles. Yeah, I probably should have gone on. But again, I wasn't taking it super serious and I had a good time. So I'd do it again. Yeah, it's kind of how I felt. Like I like like I said, I kind of petered out at that that off camber section, and so finally made it through. In fact, I almost ducked out. You know, um, when you're coming out of that, you get to a point where you can road. see the road, and I'm like, shit, I should just bail out now. <laughs> and then I didn't. I'm like, no, I'll just keep going. It's got to be pretty close. Luckily, because right after that, it just kind of turns into this. I mean, it's yeah. not super flowy, but just single track all the way to. Yeah, it was almost like a, it was an established XC trail, you know? Yeah, right, like an XC trail. Easy. But um, yeah, I don't know, man. I kind of wish I would have kept on going. I just didn't know what was after that. I'm like, do I, you know, do I want to, someone said like, okay, but if you go past this, there's like really no, no bailout. Like you got to do the whole thing. I'm like, I, I just don't know that I can do it. I'm so petered out. So, but yeah, it was, it was, to, it was really fun. <laughs> Probably the funnest one, I think, of the year course wise um i think so yeah i would definitely go back there and just ride for fun that's oh yeah i would too that's what i was thinking too i mean instead of going out to hatfield or something you could go out there because there's some really great stuff out there yeah i mean it's it's only three hours from my house so it's it's closer than where we go into hatfield so yeah yeah cool place definitely would go there again um so i think the last thing to cover is what races are coming up um i know they um they had a little bit of a schedule change with the cliffhanger so that it, they moved it up a week or something like that but the the next seer race is saddleback not for a couple months um, but between now and then we've got battle of the goats and tko and i think andy you're going to battle of the goats I'm going to battle of the goats i'm going to tko i'm going to do saddleback and i'll have to look at cliffhanger see what the dates are on that um but it's it's over at and uh at the trial center it looks like so yeah yeah we'll all we'll be at cliffhanger tko i know dusty and i we've got several people that are going to tko with us this year at least three or four other people right you guys need to come and do battle of the goats man yeah, it's totally so. battle of the goats man it's too far and it's too oh, hard oh no you're just making excuses uh. You know, the only thing about I've really seen from Battle of the Goats is that ridiculous enduro section. Oh, the infield? That right. wasn't the hard part. Well, it looked like you had to double the tires or... <laughs> you didn't have to go all Ryan Sipes on there. <laughs> <laughs> he was the only one that did that. Yeah, that's crazy. I would like to go. I was hoping to send my suspension off to get it done between these two seer races, and I kind of forgot about TKO. So I probably won't end up doing that until the winter. Yeah. All so right. Yeah, anything else coming up? I think that's it. Some local <gasps> races going on, IXCRs and stuff as usual. We'll do a couple of those, but I think that's it. 
All right. You guys good? We're all good. That's a Until wrap. Yeah. Well, the next one will be Andy's BOTG recap. And then after that, TKO. All right. Sounds good. Good to wrap.